Spreads are nothing short of a household staple within many households within the Asia Pacific region, ranging from peanut butter to gems to kaya and many more. Recently, many of these have been evolving to embrace the health and wellness trend by going low salt, low sugar, and just overall healthier. So, for this episode of the FNA Deep Dive, we speak to Victor Chin, CEO of Malaysian peanut butter firm Joby Nut Butter, to find out more about this trend. But first, we find out more about the firm itself. All right. So, hi, my name is uh, Victor Chin, and I'm the CEO of Joby. So, basically, we are the brand owner of Joby Nut Butter. Uh, which produces all natural peanut butter with no preservatives. Um, we also have a range of uh, product that is has no sh- sugar and salt. Could you tell me a little bit more about what the trend is like for peanut butter in Malaysia currently? What are you seeing in the market? Right. Um, I think the market is still largely based on the conventional peanut butter, the one that has preservatives, right? Um, slight preservatives at least. And uh, in, in our view, at least the way we're seeing it is that the market is slowly shifting to, to natural peanut butter. Uh, now, most of the natural peanut butter is actually imported. And uh, I think in 2016 alone, Malaysia imported about 40 million US dollars worth of uh, peanut butter, which I'm sure has risen a lot by now. And I think as people progress to a healthier lifestyle and get more educated on their food consumption, uh, the buying behavior will shift this way too. How would you say this uh, trend is comparing to other markets within the Asia Pacific region? Are there any markets you'd say there's a market that's really strong, especially for natural peanut butter, as you said? If we want to compare countries, I think the uh, the culture, the buying behavior, the history of that country also plays a lot of uh, difference in the acceptance of uh, peanut butter specifically. So if if you want to name as one specific country, I think uh, we look at probably Philippines, right? Philippines mm-hmm. have almost like a 50% bigger market size and consumption compared to Malaysia. and uh, But we were still not too bad actually in Malaysia because uh, a lot of people actually don't know that Malaysia is in the top 20 uh, global markets for peanut butter import, actually. Earlier, you mentioned that you also have a no salt, no sugar variant of peanut butter. So I think I'd like to ask, you know, what was the motivation behind creating this particular product? You know, and are you seeing a trend, you know, as you mentioned, towards healthier, no sugar, no salt inside the market? Uh, this is way back in probably 2015 or, or slightly earlier. Uh, was more to cater to some of our customers' demand. They, they requested for it. I think we're operating on a smaller scale back then, so we could say, hey, you know, let, let, let's just do this since uh, people want it and, and we can actually sell it. So um, we did it, and then surprisingly, uh, people kept coming back to buy and we maintain it as uh, mm. a regular product variation. But I guess it was probably a blessing in disguise, right, because... Uh, now that the trend is moving towards a, a healthier version of the product, mm-hmm. we already have something that's on the market and yep. it's uh, something that our customers are already accustomed to. If you look at it in, in different culture and different demographic markets like Singapore, uh, mm-hmm. the no sugar, no salt version, which we call our Joby Pure version, mm-hmm. uh, performs much better than the, the classic ones that perform mm-hmm. better in Asia actually. Did you see any difference in the market preferences from you know before and after COVID nineteen hit the region for the peanut butter market? Well, I, I guess specifically for us, uh, uh, COVID did accelerate our brand awareness and acceptance of online shopping. So we were a little bit different mm-hmm. compared to most uh, peanut butter brands in that we have a very strong online presence, at least in Malaysia. So uh, we mm-hmm. regard ourselves as one of the number one online peanut butter brand in Malaysia. So um, for COVID, because you know everybody can't go out and then everything is digital, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that increased adoption tremendously. That's mm-hmm. one thing that was that was good for us. Uh, second thing was that as people moved into uh, uh, only the supermarkets, because that was the only retail operations we were still allowed to open. Uh, mm-hmm. It also brought more traffic over there, and people were more willing to try. Right, different things that they have at home. 
and uh, maybe splurge a little bit on, on themselves. Uh. Are you observing any particular challenges for the peanut butter scene locally? You know, is competition from other types of nut butters considered a major challenge here? Market education will actually be the key challenge to enlarging the, the pie for the entire industry. Majority of the market is still on conventional peanut butter. They, they, they're not educated or they're not uh, accustomed to uh, the properties of a natural peanut butter. Example, right? When um, it's when the natural oil separation comes out, they, mm-hmm. they, they see it as uh, either, you know, it's something gross <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or, or they may say, hey, you know, uh, is, is, is this supposed to be the way it is? But actually it is, right? You just need to stir mm-hmm. it. So it's, it's the natural property of, of uh, uh, a natural peanut butter. Yeah. So I, I, I guess uh, that part where not only us, but the other players in the industry will have to come together and say, hey, you know, we're not competing with each other and we need to uh, educate the market together as a whole, right? Then we have a bigger market to, to play with. If not, a, a lot of them will be still on the traditional peanut butter. And I think that competition will, will always be there. Uh, but fortunately for our product line, uh, the peanut butter market is large enough to sustain mm. quite a number of players. So if, if you look at the peanut butter owl, at least in Malaysia, right, you've got tons of uh, imported brands and you've mm-hmm. also got the local brands all at different price points. So I don't think competition will, will, will affect us that much if we know each of our positioning because... Uh, we occupy the, the top end spectrum or the super premium segment competing mm-hmm. directly with imported peanut butters, not the, the mass market type. Very interesting. All right. So what about, you know, for like the spritz industry as a whole? Are there any particular trends you're seeing across the board? I'm talking like Kaya, the Jeb, the cheese yeah. spritz. Anything you're seeing that's interesting? I think a lot of brands are trying to so update traditional products and make it hip. Right, uh, mm, yeah. I see a lot of mixing of flavors with, which resonate with the newer generation. You know, to add some mm-hmm. twist and flavor to the offerings. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at peanut butter, it's largely remained unchanged for mm-hmm. many, many decades. Right, <laughs> uh, so I, I think that could be something that that is different. Like, for example, right, uh, just to take it out from our page, we have. Uh, uh, offering called Monkey King, right? That's mm. our unique signature, uh, uh, and it's one of our most uh, premium offering, which contains coconut crisps inside, mm. right? So it's a very different Asian twist to a yep. Western product, right? Uh, at least mm-hmm. traditionally mm-hmm. Western product. So I do see that that kind of uh, uh, experimentation happening in in the market, and that's probably very necessary to set ourselves apart mm. from. Uh, not only the competition, but uh, to remain relevant to, to our customers in the future. Yeah. What is your uh, opinion of the peanut butter and the spritz industries moving forward in 2021? What sort of outlook are you seeing for these industries? It will be quite challenging, you know, to be mm-hmm. frank. Uh, mainly it's because more competition and home-based industries are popping out here and there. Uh, Digital is is both a boon and a bane, depending on how you see it, mm-hmm. right? But I would foresee that there's a lot of home-based kind of chefs putting out <laughs> peanut butter. Mm. And then uh, you may have new brands trying to enter the market. So to us, at least, it's uh, expanding the market that will be yep. key uh, moving forward, right? And I think the other thing that we... Uh, we will probably be very wary is that as the digital adoption rises, uh, because we are an online brand, we call ourselves an online native brand, um, the cost of getting to new customers will be the one that is very, um, make that will make or break a, a business or a brand here, right? Uh, yeah, and, and maintaining that lower cost of customer acquisition becomes key while staying, um, maintaining that brand awareness to the existing customers. So that's that's how I see t- moving forward 2021 and challenges that we, we and the entire industry may, may face. Yeah. <music>